Today I'm going to talk about the history of logarithms and the British mathematicians who discovered this vitally important and influential concept in maths. Born on the 1st of February 1550, John Napier was the 8th Laird or Lord of Merchiston Castle. It's believed he was privately educated at home until age 13 when he enrolled in St. Salvatore's College at the University of St. Andrews. But he didn't stay there long, in fact he left to continue his education in mainland Europe. In 1571 he returned to his home in Scotland and one year later he married Elizabeth Stirling and had two children with her. In 1574 he bought a castle in Gartness where the family lived until Elizabeth died in 1579. He then married Agnes Chisholm and they had ten children together. Along with being a mathematician, Napier was also a dedicated Protestant. In 1593, he published what he considered to be his most important work, a plain discovery of the whole revelation of St John, which is an important part of Scottish ecclesiastical history. When his father died in 1608, John and his family moved back into Merchiston Castle, where he stayed until he died on the 4th of April 1617. So what exactly was Napier's great mathematical discovery? Well, the vital observation he made was that adding numbers is much easier than multiplying them. So if multiplication could somehow be turned into addition, calculations would be made much easier and quicker. This would be especially useful for astronomy and navigation at the time. Suppose we want to calculate 2.67 times 3.51 to two decimal places. Using a calculator, we can check, nowadays, that the answer is 9.37. Using Napier's method, we choose a base number close to 1, say 1.001. .001. The closer it is to 1, the more accurate the calculations will be. And we find what powers of this number give the numbers we want to multiply. So in this example, we have 1.001 .001 to the power of 983 equals 2.67 and 1.001 .001 to the power of 1,256 equals 3.51. And these powers here are called the logarithms of the respective numbers 2.67 and 3.51. Then we use the fact that powers of the same base number add together and we get our final answer, which is 1.001 .001 to the power of 983 plus 1,256 which is 1.001 .001 to the power of 2,239, which, after a long calculation, you can find out is 9.37. But you may be thinking, doesn't this just make the calculation harder and longer to do? Well, Napier realised that the answer to this question is no. But some self-sacrificing soul would have to go through the painstaking effort of calculating millions of powers of their chosen base number, and create a table of numbers and their logarithms, all to save succeeding generations a massive amount of time doing calculations. Napier decided to dedicate 20 years of his life to this task, and he finally published Mirifici Logarithmorum Canonis Descriptio in 1614. However, his logarithms, useful though they were, could have been better. This is where Henry Briggs comes in. Henry Briggs was born in February 1561 at Worley Wood in the parish of Halifax, Yorkshire. In 1577 he enrolled at St John's College, Cambridge and graduated in 1581. In 1596 he became the first professor of geometry at Gresham College, London, where he also taught astronomy and navigation. Because of his great interest in astronomy and navigation, which require lots of long and difficult calculations, he was enchanted by Napier's logarithms. But as he studied Napier's book, he found two problems with what Napier had done. So in 1615, he undertook the four day long journey to visit Napier and discuss how his logarithms could be improved. It's said that when they met, almost one quarter of an hour was spent, each beholding the other with admiration before one word was spoken. So what did the two of them discuss? Well, firstly, Briggs spotted that since Napier actually used a number slightly less than 1 as his base, the logarithm of any number above 1 would be negative, which would make calculations using them more difficult than necessary. So he suggested that the base should be a number slightly bigger than 1. 
The second problem was that it wasn't clear when the table could stop, because numbers that appear related, like 1.234 and 12.34, for example, had logarithms that didn't seem related. This problem was caused by the value of log 10, because the logarithm of 10 times a number is the same as the logarithm of that number plus log 10. So if log 10 were to equal 1, then we could easily find log of 12.34 from log of 1.234, just by adding 1. Briggs suggested that to make the log of 10 equal to 1, Napier's logarithms could all just be divided by the log of 10, which is 2303, with 1.001 as the base, like before. And this created logarithms to base 10, also known as Briggsian logarithms. From this point on, tables of logarithms would only need to have the numbers between 1 and 10, because the logs of bigger numbers can be found by adding 1 the required number of times. In 1617, Briggs published Logarithmorum Chilias Prima, which contained the base 10 logarithms of the integers from 1 to 1000, all accurate to 14 decimal places. Briggs died on the 26th of January 1630, and was buried in the chapel of Merton College, Oxford. There's a crater on the moon called Briggs, which is named in his honour. So, fellow British person watching this, be proud. Be proud of the inventions and achievements of your ancestors. Not just logarithms, but also the myriad of other ideas conceived by the native people of our island. And above all, never forget that we have so very much to be proud of, and don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. <laughs>